How can I protect the sea if I don't know what's in it? How can I protect it if I don't know what's affecting it? These are the two questions that drive Gloni, or Algae, a project headed by Blanca Bruva and Catherine Larson. The project combines product design, material design, and community design, focusing on protecting the Polish Baltic Sea and advocating for responsible material extraction. It was installed as a part of Gdynia Design Days 2022. At the heart of the project is the algae known as Versillaria lumbaris. This algae, which is also affectionately called fork colloquially in Polish due to its shape, used to grow floating freely in gigantic undersea meadows. The juvenile Fursillaria were protected by the waves by adult Fursillaria. However, Fursillaria is also an important source of agar and carrageenan. These extracts are commonly used in a variety of products, from pudding to toothpaste. Because of this, the Polish Fursillaria was overextracted. Now Fursillaria only grows attached to rocks, and attempts to repopulate the meadows have, so far, failed. Agar and carrageenan are also important polysaccharides for the biodesign community, which has continually experimented open source with bioplastics. Bioplastics are plastics from biological origin instead of oil origin, and can sometimes decompose in home compost situations depending on the ingredients. There is no biodesign education in Poland at the moment. So Blanca centered the Gdynia Design Days experience around teaching visitors how to make their own bioplastic from seaweed, as well as the importance of responsible material sourcing. We wanted to show people that this is an accessible skill and encourage people from all backgrounds to get involved in the biodesign movement. As the base, we used two cups of water, one teaspoon of glycerin, and four tablespoons of agar agar. This is a base ratio that can be experimented with and modified to suit your needs. Most algae bioplastic recipes call for expensive equipment like dehydrators. If the plastic base is left to dry in a climate that is too humid for too long, mold can grow. Although most people in Poland do not have access to a dehydrator, they do have access to a mushroom dryer or an oven. Leaving the bioplastic for a few hours in a kiln or an oven set to 50 degrees is a suitable hack for drying out the plastic. Blanca also worked with local researchers Jan Marcin Wolowski and Lech Kotwicki to extract Fursilarin from responsibly sourced Fursilaria. This extract was used to design and create a soft bioplastic reef, which can be then used to protect juvenile Fursilaria and help regrow the seaweed meadows. Other Baltic Sea species we worked to highlight in a material perspective included gulf wedge clams, salmon, and eelgrass. The gulf wedge clams are invasive species and are overtaking native fauna. We received a permit to harvest them, and we utilized their shells to create concrete-like composites. We tanned the skins of salmon and turned the scales and bones into glue. Normally, the bones and scales are waste and discarded, and we wanted to honor every part of the fish and share its value. The fishmongers were surprised and pleased that we could turn what they normally discard into objects and materials of value. Tanning fish skin is an indigenous craft and it was almost lost due to colonialism preventing peoples from practicing their own culture. From Ainu in Hokkaido to the Inuit people of Alaska, Haitian in Northeast China, Sami in Sweden, Nanai in Siberia, and more, tanned fish skin has been a staple of traditional craftsmanship by indigenous communities around the world. Since I am a designer with both Polish and Puerto Rican indigenous ancestry, my goal was to highlight the history of this material as well as the need to respect its origins as many European designers are not aware of the motions behind this material. We use the salmon skins in the exhibition to educate visitors and draw attention to indigenous elders and designers who have reinterpreted the craft, including June Pardew and Hannah Scholl. We urge other designers to learn from and support these indigenous designers directly to learn more about this. In order to fully understand the contextual gravity of working with this material, I received guidance from fellow designer Andrea Liu, who has focused her craft around weaving and tanning fish skins. Finally, we juxtaposed a chair of tanned salmon skins against a chair of eelgrass in the exhibition to further share the potential of these materials. Eelgrass has long been used to stuff mattresses in Baltic Sea countries and as an insulation material for buildings. It is also a litmus test for seabed health and has been threatened by agricultural runoff causing nutrient loading. 
There is not enough eelgrass along the Polish coast anymore to use it responsibly as a material. Our eelgrass was sourced from the Danish farm Mintang, which is a traditional Danish seagrass farm. With Glony, we are hoping to continue the project outwards through the biodesign community by continuing to collaborate and teach with other researchers and designers working to protect the sea. We think tying the species to material objects helps spread the awareness of how important these resources are to not only protect our wildlife, but the heritage we will hand down to our children.